Hello and welcome to Neuro Classroom. Today we are going to continue with the basics what we have seen in the last class. It was about the upper motor neuron lesion and the lower motor neuron lesion. We saw about the corticospinal tract which is one of the pyramidal tract. But apart from that we do also have a corticobulbar tract, very often ignored tract when uh, exam questions are asked to students. Here also we have upper motor neuron and a lower motor neuron. The facial problems are also uh, divided into upper and lower motor uh, variants. So the corticobulbar tract as we saw in the pyramidal tract do arises from the, um, uh, the motor cortex of the brain that particularly the cerebral cortex in the frontal lobe. Thereafter it comes down and it passes through the inter corona radiata and then enters into the genu of the internal capsule. Few fibers are also there in the posterior limb of the internal capsule but predominantly it is in the genu and then it enters into the crest cerebri of the midbrain and it innervates all the nucleus of the cranial nerves here. So here what you have to remember is as we have our peripheral nerves as the lower motor neurons we have the cranial nerves which are the royal lower motor neuron for the face neck and the certain muscles of the upper trunk so what is the upper motor neuron here the upper motor neuron or all the neurons that are located in the cerebral cortex which are contributing for the corticobulbar tract fine so what it does it comes all the way here and it gives another uh, it gives twigs to the nucleus of the cranial nerves not all the cranial nerves but the cranial nerves listed here the exception being the olfactory and optic which arises from the brain the remaining all other cranial nerves arises from the brain stem and the spinal accessory nerve has some twigs onto the spinal cord also so predominantly uh, all the 10 cranial nerves except the first and second arises from the brain stem so this is what is very important here now the information from the upper motor neuron are relayed into the nucleus of the respective cranial nerves and from here a twig arises here all the uh, cells which are here are similar to the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord and they are the lower motor neuron for example if you take this hypoglos uh, glossopharyngeal nerve you have uh, nucleus of the glossopharyngeal here and from here the glossopharyngeal nerve comes out so which is the upper motor neuron and which is the lower motor neuron here the cells which are there in the cerebral cortex are the upper motor neuron for the corticobulbar tract and the respective uh, cells which are there in the uh, cranial uh, nerve nuclei which gives rise for the cranial nerve or the lower motor neuron so what you have to remember is when there is an injury to any of this area leading up to the nucleus of the uh, cranial nerves this causes an upper motor neuron symptom and in the nucleus or below the nucleus if there is any problem then that is going to lead to a lower motor neuron symptoms so very similar to the corticospinal tract but what is the difference between the corticobulbar and the corticospinal tract the corticobulbar tract do not predominantly innervates the opposite side 50 percent of the nerve fibers remains on the same side and 50 percent of the nerve fiber goes to the opposite side this is applicable to the other side also so uh, the crossing over takes place 50% only the 50% remains on the ipsilateral side whereas if you see in the corticospinal tract the fibers 85% to 87% of the nerve fibers crosses onto the opposite side and only 10 to 12% of the nerve fibers remains on the ipsilateral side fine so here that is the major difference so that's why you can see here I have uh, mentioned it like it comes here and innervates onto both the sides of the oculomotor nerve nuclei. Next is the trochlea. For trochlea also, it innervates onto the either side. For trigeminal, it innervates onto the either side. For abducent, it innervates onto the either side. But when it comes to the facial nerve, here there is another uh, twist. That is, the uh, facial nerve can be divided into upper quadrant and the lower quadrant based upon the facial distribution so this is the upper quadrant and this is the lower quadrant 
this is the opposite side upper quadrant and lower quadrant if you divide the face into four quadrants so if I divide the face into four quadrants this is the upper quadrant and this is the lower quadrant okay cortical bulbar tracts innervates the upper quadrant on the ipsilateral side and the both quadrants on the contralateral side so when I have a problem in the left side uh, cortical bulbar tract then what happens it happen, it results only in the problem of the ipsilateral lower quadrant will be only affected so remember this we have a lot of uh, topics to discuss and differential diagnosis to be done using the cortical bulbar tract we are coming up with the later on so just as of now remember this so likewise if you see all other cranial nerves are similar but the hypoglossal nerve also do not innervate the ipsilateral side it innervates only the contralateral side so when the patient has a left-sided um, cortical bulbar tract involvement the opposite side hypoglossal uh, functions will be lost so upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron for the uh, cortical bulbar tract is clear with this so when I say bulbar that means the brain stem there is a lot of interchangeable uh, thoughts on this but let me clarify this bulbar means the brain stem hope you understand and in the next class we are coming up with how the uh, extra pyramidal system behaves what are, what are the upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron for the extra pyramidal system until then bye take care